Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop, and this is going to be epi episode 126 of Saturday Night Special. So we've got some gifts that I'm going to share with you, some stuff that I was given, things that I picked up and received from the Barzy Bash. I had uh, put a box together with a lot of that stuff and had Stan ship it to me. So I got it this week and uh, I've got a few things that I'm going to share with you. Some really nice stuff, very thoughtful gifts, that uh, things that were made for me and given to me and, and, and that kind of stuff. So we're going to we're going to share a few of those. And... I've got a little bit of machining, a little project that I want to start on. I've got a little uh, shaft over here that I'm going to make. And I want to go ahead and, and share uh, another one of the little tools from Edge Technologies. We're going we're gonna to look at it, uh, pull it out of the package, and then we're going to give it a try over on the lathe. This will be a lathe tool, and we're going to see how, uh, how handy it works. I've never used one before, so we're going we're gonna to test it out and see how we like it, okay? So I got a few things I'll start with to kind of uh, show you and then I want to pull the camera in for a little bit better shot on a few of the things. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, mention real quick was Tom Lipton just showed some, some of the uh, India stones for sale in the uh, KBC Tools catalog. Uh, if you watch Tom Lipton's uh, video, KBC is a, is a supporter of his channel and they're also a supporter of this community. Uh, giving us a, a discount to use with their with their company. I believe it was either a 10 or 15 percent discount. But Tom showed some India stones and I wanted to share this because I don't think I ever did. This is one that I picked up at the flea market probably about a month ago or so now. Uh, Norton Multi Stone and this is 11 and a half by two and a half by one. And I figured Tom might like this one right here. But I picked this up at the flea market and it's been very little used. You can see a little bit of metal on there from where it was used very, very slightly. But it looks brand new. And uh, the lady was asking $10 for it, and I dealt with her, and she let me have it for $8. So very nice stone right there. <clears throat> These can be used for uh, your mill tables or any kind of nice flat surface. You can, uh, you can stone your surface and get rid of any little dings or high marks. So that just kind of reminded me of that. I forgot that I had picked that up and shared it with you. And Tom had showed those on over on his channel. So there's a couple gifts right here that I wanted to uh, share that we got at the, uh, the Bar Z Bash. And I do not remember the name of the couple that give this stuff to me. Uh, they are viewers. They watch the videos, so I think they'll be seeing this. This was um, a bottle of liquor that was made up in Seattle. I don't recall the type of liquor this is, but it, it is a blackberry liquor. And this uh, won some kind of award up at, uh, at some kind of festival. And anyway, they wanted me to have a bottle of it. So it's a blackberry and it looks very nice. Looks <laughs> looks good. So they give me that. And then this, um, this is a a portable watering dish for a, for a dog and so this is for Stella so Stella got her a little bit of a, a viewer appreciation gift right there uh, the nice a very nice item uh, a company called Filson and very good quality product right there so uh, on Stella's behalf thank you very much for the little watering dish and the nice little bottle of liquor we're gonna save that for a special occasion <laughs> and while I was out there one of uh, Stan's viewers give him a whole case of this Merlot that they had the custom print put on with his logo and Barzy Industrial Development. And he give out a few of these bottles to some of us other contributors there. So nice little bottle of Merlot from the bash there. That was pretty cool. And um, I, had a, I had a visitor stop by last weekend. His name is Harold Waters. And he is also on YouTube under amateur redneck workshop he's got a channel there and he comments on the videos and he's been a long time viewer but anyway he had stopped by to visit me and then he was headed to uh, visit keith rucker over there in tifton georgia and his wife was with him so she gave me some homemade blackberry jelly that she makes and also a bottle of this tiger sauce that they like some some hot sauce so that was very cool and uh, it was nice to meet you, Harold. Uh, very, very nice of you to stop by. 
and uh, had a good time there with that with that visit. Here's some more of the little gifts that were handed to me at the Barzi Bash. So we'll start with this one here. This is one Stan showed on his on his channel. I don't recall who it was that made these, but uh, Stan announces it, and he made a handful of them to give out to different contributors, and Stan gave me one of them. So very cool, nice little memento for the Barzi Bash 2016. And then we've got two more here that were given to me, and these are made by, uh, it was uh, Kevin Reese, Kevin and Karen Reese. They own this company here, KK Woodworking, and they build these very nice challenge coins. This one right here is for the, uh, it was the, where was it at now? San Bernardino? Yes, San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Very nice looking coin right there. Very cool. And then this is one right here for the uh, fire department. Cool stuff, man. Nice, nice little gifts for the shop there. Those, those are great looking, and, and those will be around here. Nice little mementos. We got a couple right here that I want to share with you also. This is uh, a little figure that was hand carved and given to me by Danny Metzger. He was there, and, and a few of us received some of these little handmade gifts. And I believe. This is from, made from a piece of ivory off of a, a walrus, if I remember correctly, and it's a carving of a whale. And these are, these are made by um, uh, Native Alaskans, uh, a tribe up there who he uh, works directly with, and that's where he got this from and wanted me to have it. So very, very nice little piece that we'll keep around the shop right here. And we also got this uh, Engineer's Black Book, USA edition, so a lot of uh, imperial measurements in there. And this has already been talked about on some of the other channels. It is a very handy book, a lot of cool info. And this was kind of directly in relation to Bruce Witham. And this is his company here, Jim Trek, and he is from Perth, Australia. We got to meet him. He was at the bash. He's on all the videos that's out there for the uh, Barzi Bash, but I believe he kind of worked out the deal for this uh, company uh, to sponsor and uh, give out some of these books. I know that they were there. They had a, a representative uh, that's located in Los Angeles. I don't recall what his name is, but he was there in person, and they give out a lot of these books to some of the creators, and uh, they raffled a lot of them off to the viewers as well. So very cool. Nice little book there, and I'm glad I got Bruce's little sticker to go on the cabinet now. I also wanted to give a mention that while we were out there in California, we were given a tour at the Stanridge Granite Plant. Uh, that was uh, given to us by uh, Michael. Uh, he, I believe he is one of the owners of Stanridge, and they also are a sister company of Precision Granite. So we got to take a tour of their facility and also over at Precision Granite and got to see how granite surface plates are made how they're cut and finished and lapped in that was a really cool tour i've got some video of that coming up that i haven't got to yet so uh, we're going to see a little bit of um, of a tour through the stanridge granite facility they also are a supporter of this machinist community and they give discounts for us so uh, if you call up stanridge to order a granite plate or any accessory I believe they'll give you a, a, like a 10% discount. I don't know if it's 10 or 15 or 20, but call them and, um, and uh, mention Bar Z Industrial and they'll give you a discount on it. They also were very kind and, and give us, that give us a tour, a bottle of this uh, granite surface plate cleaner. So I finally have me a nice bottle of this for my granite plate. Unfortunately, I don't have a Stanridge granite plate. Mine is an old do-all, but this is something that I got last year from an auction here in town. Paid 100 bucks for it with the stand, and it's just a nice uh, shop grade of granite plate. But uh, be on the lookout. We're going to make a little video of their tour of their facility. All right, so I got a little small turning project that I'm going to work on right here. We got a small little shaft that we got to make. We're going to use a piece of uh, three quarter inch cold roll to make this. It's going to be five eighths on one side and and uh, half inch on the other side with a couple keys. This is going to be a little project for one of our viewers, Keelan Lightfoot. 
This is something that I had uh, talked to him about in December of 2015. So I've had this for quite a while and agreed that this would make a nice little project for S&S. &S. So, uh, something that I'm going to get started on, but what I'd like to do is share with you a, a, a new tool from Edge Technology. Uh, if, you, if you watched last week, I'd mentioned that they are now a supporter of the channel. And we've got a couple tools that we're going to be sharing and uh, seeing how they work. So we got this here. This is uh, called a speedy lathe gauge, and it's for setting tool height on your, on your turning tools. So we'll go ahead and we'll open it up and look, give it a little peek here. And like all of their tools, it comes with a nice, clear, easy to read instruction manual here. Even gives you pictures. We all like seeing pictures that tells you how to set it up. So the first thing that we're going to do is calibrate it level. And it says to set it on your compound and you loosen this screw and you adjust this vial until it's nice and level there. And then you're going to push it up against the bar stock. So we're going to, we're going to push it up against the bar stock like so and help and uh, hold it square. And then this tip here sits on the tip of your tool and adjust the height of the cutter here until the vial reads level. So let's go over to the lathe and give this thing a try, okay? First thing we're gonna do with this edge uh, lathe centering tool is we're gonna set it on the compound, make sure it's cleaned off there. And you wanna make sure that it's perpendicular to your axis here. So we'll just kind of judge it, you know. And we're gonna take a little Allen wrench. We're gonna use a 3 seconds Allen wrench. You can see that it's not level and they ship it out like that. So we'll go ahead and loosen this up to where we can, we can adjust it, let's see. And we're going to try to get this leveled in. That's looking pretty good right there. Let's see if I can maintain that. Just barely touching the two lines there. Let's see if I snug it up if it stays the same. I'll hold it down. Yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. So I would call that pretty well calibrated by sight. So now we'll go ahead and center it up on the on a piece of material with a tool bit. Alright, so I dropped my WNMG turning insert tool into the tool post and we're gonna we're gonna check that out. I've actually purposely dropped it just a little bit off center so that we can uh, see how this is gonna work out for us. So you're gonna have to hold it square against the uh, workpiece there with your fingers. And that tip right there, we're gonna, we're gonna run our tool up and see if we can get it adjusted where it just touches the turning tip, the corner of the tool. And I'm trying to use one hand here so I don't block it in the, in the view, okay. All right, we've got it touching the tool, square against the work. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this, or bring my tool up. All right, that's looking pretty good from this angle right here. I think I, once I tightened it, it went just a touch too high. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Let's give it a shot. We'll go ahead and make a little cut. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's check this tool right here. This is one of my, 
uh, high speed chip breaker tools. We'll check it real quick while we're while we're playing. So let's get in here and Okay, so it looks like I've got that tool set a little bit high. You can see it's out of level there. So, not a bad little gauge, nice and handy. Very simple to find the find your tool tip right on the center of your work. So if you're interested in picking up one of those, I've got a discount code that I'm going to show on the screen right there. Just put in that promo code and you can give you, get yourself 10% uh, off the purchase of uh, one of these tools. I'm going to go ahead and start turning on this little shaft I'm, I'm getting ready to make. This is, a, again, a piece of three-quarter cold roll. And we just faced it off uh, using that little um, speedy uh, lathe centering tool from uh, Edge. And what I've done is I pulled this out and I haven't centered it yet. And I did this on the last shaft and I had some guys ask me, why didn't I center drill it whenever I had it up close? The reason why I don't like to do that on every job is because of this. So I pulled it out. I pulled it out about nine and a half inches. We're gonna have a total work piece of eight and seven eighths. So we've got a little bit, about five eighths there. All right, you see how that's whipping? If I was to center drill that up here and then extend that out and center drill it, or uh, the center already be in there, then that's going to be a center that's not that's that's running out. And you can shove a center point in there and make it run center, but then it's not exactly running true like it should be. So right now it's in its natural state where it wants to run. So I'm just applying some axial pressure against that to cut that center. No big deal. And now we'll just turn it true. We'll just make it true. So that's what the deal with that is right there. Uh, sometimes you can't always do that, but you know, why is this running out? Well, it could be a number of things. This collet chuck and this collet may not be running true. That's a good possibility. The other thing is this material itself may have a slight bend in it that I don't know about. So we're gonna machine it true. So we'll go ahead and, and come up here and cut our little center in it to hold it. Just take it nice and easy. Now we've got a nice running center there that we're not trying to force to the center of the shaft. So that's a hundred thousandths cut, and this is the insert again. It's an Ingersoll VNMG 432R BF. Uh, the insert is a TT9080.
got our shaft filed to size, half inch. Checking it all the way down. We've got it half inch. And then our next journal right here, this is 5 8 0.625. And we've got it 0.625. I was shooting for like one to two tenths under uh, the nominal there to give it just a little bit of clearance. So that's what we've got right there. We've got one to two tenths under all the way down. I just dropped that tool in that tool post there and I noticed that it was high. So I'm going to go ahead and give this tool another try again since we had already uh, checked it out earlier. Let's give it a Let's give it another go. So what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm trying to make sure it's square against the back of the, uh, the little V there against the workpiece. All right, that looks pretty good right there. that in there we'll just stick it back into a 5 8 collet and just dress that end off All right, so we got Keenan's little shaft machined up. Pretty simple little lathe job there, turning and milling the two keyways on it. And it checks out good against the print there. And that little tool, again, that we use today from Edge, called a speedy lathe gauge for setting your tool height. All right, guys, we'll see you next week, okay?